Hello everyone. This video covers section 6.3, the central uh, limit theorem. The central limit theorem is possibly the most important theorem in the whole semester because from now on, everything at some point depends on the central limit theorem. What the central limit theorem uh, does is kind of like doing magic. What it says is this. Regardless of the distribution, which means regardless of which random variable you have, as long as the sample size is at least 30, so as long as you have 30 or more, x bar, I mean, not x, but x bar is normally distributed. Remember, once you get something to be normal, that means all you have to do is use the table or the calculator. So that's why this is like magic in some sense, because you can find the probability of any distribution using the normal distribution as long as the sample size is more than 30. And the only price you have to pay is that you cannot find probabilities about x. It has to be about x bar. The formula is very, very similar to 6.2. Actually, 6.2 is the formula. And you can see the similarity between these two. This is the official formula. This and this is exactly the same thing. If you do a little algebra, I recommend you to use this one instead. This is easier for computational purposes. But if you look closely to this one, this one, you can see that this and this are very similar. In fact, this is a special case of this one when n is equals to one. If n is one, the square root of one is one and x bar just become x. So pretty much section 6.2 is a special case of 6.3 when n is equals to one. But the central limit theorem is even more important than that because it will change any distribution to normal as long as n is equal to 30. The good news is that once you change this to z, this is identical to 6.2, which means it's identical to 6.1. Let's do an example. Uh, this one says, the amount of caffeine in organic coffee has a mean of 60 milligrams, which means mu is 60 and a standard deviation of a, sigma is equals to a. Notice how the problem doesn't say anywhere that it is normal. So therefore you cannot assume that this is a normal distribution. However, the next part says this, if you pick a sample of 36, which means n is 36, which is more than 30, so that means that x bar will be normal and therefore you can find probabilities about x bar since the central limit theorem applies. So also notice how the question is very specific. It says, what is the probability that the sample mean? Remember that the sample mean is x bar. So therefore the question is asking what's the probability that x bar is less than 57. Well, we're going to do the same thing within 6.2, except that we're going to use this formula instead of this one. So now z is going to be the square root of 36 times 57 minus 60 divided by a, which is equals to minus 2.25. You should check this. Once you find the value for z, then this is identical to section 6.1. Again, you have zero here, negative 2.25 is somewhere here. Again, less is to the left. So this is the part that you want, which is the green part. Remember the table will give you this, which is the table or the yellow area which in this case is 0.987a so this 
So therefore, how do you find the green one? Remember that the green one is equals to one minus the yellow. So in this case, it will be one minus 0.9878, which is equals to point zero one two two. Or you can use the calculator. Remember, this will be normal CDF. The lower bound is minus one thousand. The upper bound is minus two point two five. And it should give you exactly the same answer. All right. So as you can see, this is identical to uh, six point two except that you have to use this formula instead of this one okay also this is about x bar and this is about x all right so using the same information remember the mean is 60 and the standard deviation is a let's do another question so part B is asking what's the probability that the sample mean, remember this is X bar, will contain more than 70. Remember that mu was equals to 60 and sigma was equals to, to A, that hasn't changed, and N was 36. So therefore, X bar now is 70. And the question you're trying to find is what's the probability that x bar is greater than 70? Well, c will be the square root of 36 times 70 minus 60 divided by a, which is 7.5. So therefore, this is the same thing as the probability that z is greater than 7.5. Now, this is actually a very unusually large number, but this happens sometimes. If you use a calculator, you actually will get something a little weird. If you use a calculator, this is normal CDF 7.5, because remember 7.5 is somewhere here, and you want the green area because it says greater then the upper bound is 1000. If you plug that in the calculator, you will get 3 .1, uh, sorry, 3.1, sorry, 3.2172, keeps going, e to the minus 14. Well, what this means is actually that you have 13 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then the number 3, 2, 1, 7, 2. Again, this is the exact number, but as you can see, this can be a little confusing or annoying. If you only write this part, the number is, uh, the solution is wrong. So you have to either write it like this with this e to the minus 14 or write all of this for something like this the table is actually easier and faster if you look at the table you'll notice that 7.5 is not there actually the biggest number on the table is 3.59 but the thing that is very interesting to notice is this if you look at the last row the numbers keep repeating, which means that after 3.5, it doesn't matter anymore. You're gonna get the same value. So therefore, this doesn't happen very often, but if it does, this is not the exact value, it's only an approximation. But every time that the number goes over 3.5, you just use the last value, which is 0.998. And that will be more friendly than this one so if we use the the table this will be one minus point nine 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 a which is around point zero 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 two 
again this is not the exact value this is just an approximation but for the purpose of the class this is more than enough and it's easier and nicer and more friendly to see that's something that looks like like this but again it's up to you you can write this or this or this both of them are right but if you leave this out this part will be wrong all right so that's it for this problem recall from the last page that the central limit theorem applies when n is at least 30. however you have to be very careful here you need to have at least 30 if the distribution is not normal this question is identical to the previous one except that now it says this part this is telling us that the distribution is normal remember the whole point of the central limit theorem is to change something that is not normal into normal if the distribution is already normal then and this is very important the sample size is not important anymore which means you don't need to have at least 30 it will work even when n equals to 1 which was section 6.2 so to summarize the central limit theorem applies under two conditions either the distribution is normal then the sample size doesn't matter or if the distribution is not normal then you need to have at least a sample size of 30. all right so here notice the the mean is still 60 the standard deviation is still a but now the value for n is 16 which is less than 30 but that's this is okay why because it is normal where there so it's normal we still will be using the same formula z is equal to the square root of n x bar minus mu over sigma which is remember this is the central limit theorem formula so what is the question asking here what's the probability that the sample mean will contain remember the sample mean is x bar less than 63 milligrams so therefore the question is asking was the probability that x bar will be less than 63 so then we apply the standardization formula so from here z will be the square root of 16 times 63 minus 60 divided by a which is 1.5 so therefore this is the same thing as the probability that z is less than 1.5 again go back to this 1.5 is here less is this which means whatever you get from the table that will be the answer from the table uh, we get the, the yellow area is 0.9332 and remember when it's the yellow area you don't have to modify anything so the answer is just 0.9332 or if you use the calculator this will be normal cdf the lower bound remember is one minus 1000 if it goes to the left and the upper bound is 1.5 which will give you again 9332 that's it All right I hope that makes sense and that's it for 6.3